Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, it's right before Christmas, and if I sound like I'm a little under weather, it's because it is cold out there, and I had a very cold drive in, and here I am, I'm in the warehouse, it's what, uh, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and uh, you know, I, I had a bunch of these uh, fetal monitors come in, and I thought, you know, I don't know if I've ever done a video on them. So if you're, let's just run through it real quick, I can show you guys its functionality, some of the stuff on the front, and then let's go ahead and let's take a look inside the device so we can see what's going on in the device. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up like this so you guys can see the front. It, this is an overhead camera. Uh, first time I've ever used this kind of orientation, but in order to get the scope of everything that's going on inside this guy, I need the camera to be a little bit further away. And uh, also the camera angle is essential compared to the angle of the LED lights. I get really bad lighting sometimes. So um, anyway guys, this right here is the 250CX and this is a GE fetal monitor. It's very typical. You're going to see this in all sorts of mother baby wards everywhere you go. Um, it does a lot of different functions. So there is ultrasound, there is uh, TOCO. Um, and you know, I'm not gonna go into detail on what those are and how they function. Um, but we will take a look at some of the boards that control some of that functionality. One of the most important things on this entire device and one of the highest points of failure is gonna be your printer. And the printer does come out as a unit and it's gonna print a strip. Uh, the strip is going to either contain data on the maternal ECG or the fetal ECG and the pressure in kilopascals over here. So you're gonna have two different graphs. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in so that you guys can see what it looks like when this guy is powered up. Usually uh, they fail because of users, of course. And, and that's because users tend to drop them. I don't know how or why, but they definitely do. And you see uh, we have a lot of cracks in the bezel. Some of those are stress cracks due to age and cleaning solvents. Um, but at the same time, some of them is because of impact damage. So like this guy over here is impact damage. I got one over there. It's got impact damage. So there's a variety of different inputs and outputs on this guy. Um, you know, because you will hook this guy up to different types of um, reporting tools or digital medical records. And there's a whole variety of ways to do that. Um, a variety of different outputs too for different functionality, alarms, etc. Let's go ahead and set this guy down. I've never powered it up, so let's hope that this guy at least powers up. Okay, so it has the uh, power supply first, amber, then green. And then we have this display, which is, um, well, the core metrics display is a little bit dim. And I don't know if you guys are gonna pick it up so well because as they get older, some of these backlights are just starting to go out. And as the backlight goes out, it's gonna be much more difficult to tell the different colors of your display. Um, so down here is the MECG, that's maternal ECG. And uh, then there's also gonna be fetal ECG, which is gonna be the other thing that we can select. As soon as it boots up, you're gonna see that the printer is in fact moving. It's moving very slow, but it is moving. And there's a variety of ways to stop that from happening. One of them is to open it up, but it will throw uh, an error code there's gonna be different status codes up here in the display. So right now it says in-op, in-op, um, and then your, your TOCO reading is gonna be over here. Um, you can see it's got NIBP, you got your pulse for your um, SpO2. So interesting thing about these guys is they do come in Massimo, the, they do come in Nelcor. Pay attention to the little symbols down here because more people mess this up than anything else is what type of SPO2 connects, just because it's a GE connector doesn't mean nothing. It could be a variety of different uh, technologies. This one here says Massimo set. Nelcor is, is one of those that creates a lot of headache because there's not just Nelcor, there's a variety of different Nelcor technologies. So anyway, the green port right here, this is gonna be for your adapter. And the adapter is gonna be a Y, and that Y is going to have maternal ECG and fetal ECG so that you can split it off between the two and then you select which one you want to pay attention to right here. We have NIBP, it's a two hose NIBP. 
We have a start stop button for the NIBP. We have a test button, which I'll go over in just a moment. Um, there's a mark and offset button. There's a uh, UA reference. This is going to be a reference, I believe, for the, the TOCO. And um, there's paper advance, and then there's record, so you can start recording whenever you want. There's a light. The reason that there's a light down here on the printer is because it is often dark in a lot of delivery rooms, especially like at night while you're waiting for the baby, you know, and she's waiting for dilation. That is why this little light is right here. It is going to be an essential piece. So um, I can hear the printer running right now. <laughs> okay. So anyway, let's go ahead and let's press the test button. You're going to see that the display, uh, or maybe you're not going to see it. So the display is going to flash through a variety of different colors, which is going to test the pixels on your display. And it's going to, you can see a scan line going across. And at the same time, over here, your printer is going to be doing a line test. So you're going to test out all the uh, elements over here on your thermal printer. How cool. And so you can see it flashes through a template of what, what parameters might look like. And then it goes back to your in off because I've got nothing connected. So anyway, uh, it says test are all the dots printed and there's two lines. The lines on this printer are solid. It's beautiful. Tell you what, I'm going to take this guy off. I need to get my test sheet and I'll show you guys what that test sheet looks like. There we go. Okay. So you can see right here, it says, are all the lines printed? And there's two solid lines. So you have lines long ways, which test your tracking, you know, for skew. And then you've got your line that is going across like there, which tests all your elements going across the entire print head. Very cool. So the test button is a quick way to check it out. Um, there is a fluke fetal simulator that we connect to this guy to test it out. I don't have it because they're they're exceptionally rare and mine is out currently in the field because December PMs, you know, <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's why I've got these monitors sitting here because before we release them back to the customers after a repair, um, then they get connected to a fetal simulator and we run through all these parameters. We have uh, the typical GE selector over here, you know, it goes through all the different screens. Um, setup is, I don't know, it's, it's a typical GE setup. Um, service, I'm not going to go through that either because this is a video and I never know who's going to watch these videos. Alarm silence, you're definitely going to want this button over here. That's why it's a different color because this thing tends to throw a lot of errors and it's errors because usually of setup, the patient's poorly prepped, whatever it is, um, the toco isn't in the correct position. Just a whole bunch of stuff can go wrong with this guy. So um, it does tend to alarm quite a bit. And that's why you have the alarm silence prominent right there. You got volume up and down uh, because you can set this guy to beepity beep depending on the uh, ECG waveform. Um, so you can do beepity beep for one, beepity beep for two. <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and let's shut this guy down. Let's unplug it and let's get inside it and take a look and what is in this older technology it, it might be old but they're still everywhere you can find this guy absolutely everywhere it's all over the market so i'm going to very delicately set it on its face um mind you there is that selector over here so you have that selector knob just be careful i'm i'm not putting all the pressure on it and i'm going to show you some of the stuff to look out for because Often, when people do PMs, all they do is they go through it and they run these guys through a simulator, and that is not a good PM on these guys, and I'm going to show you why. So there is a host of screws on the back. Now mind you, I am using a power tool to take the screws out. I will not be using the power tool to put the screws back in because they are screwing in the sheet metal and people with power tools mess this up more than anything, you know. I always use a hand screwdriver when I'm screwing back into sheet, sheet metal. All right, so there we go. 
there's four screws on the on the bottom there's five on the back and then the cover is ready to come off or maybe it's not because it's been on there a while <laughs> side and some of the stuff that I wanted to show you is going to be right over here now these guys uh, they do have active cooling oh. <laughs> there we go now uh, the reason that I say that a PM for these guys is not just simply going forth and hooking up to a simulator and testing out is because these guys have active cooling but the fan is not on the back so you can't clean it you have to open it up to get inside it and if this fan right here has any problems your power supply which is right here your low voltage power supply it is going to have a very bad day so one of the other things that you have to pay attention to is the fact that the fan doesn't just cool your power supply in this unit over here inside this cage we have your ultrasound boards and the way the air moves on this guy is air comes in and it goes across and it's gonna come out openings over here but it's gonna you can kind of see how the air goes down this channel and goes through the ultrasound and it comes out the ultrasound there's actually some ventilation holes so the air has to come through and throughout the machine you have to clean this fan and I've seen many times where this fan is all boogered up this one here is no exception it is incredibly dirty um, so a PM for these guys I take the cover off and I have a selection of different like paint brushes that you get in there and you can clean it all up of course you want to be grounded because when you're using a vacuum cleaner on any electronic it could create some problems so definitely ground yourself out and use an ESD vacuum. The only time I have ever had ESD problems is when I was actually vacuuming out um, a photocopier of all things. But uh, you know, ESD is an issue. So one of the things you have to pay attention with is, is the fact that this device is sectioned off. So your power supply is over here in a cage. There is a reason for that. Then we have uh, some IO and uh, input outputs. And then over here we have our non-invasive blood pressure, which is on a card. We have a CPU card back here, which takes data from a lot of different things, uh, including, uh, I think your ultrasound and whatnot. There's a little daughter board that fits underneath this cage and it connects to this guy. So this would be your CPU card. And then you have another CPU motherboard down here in the back. This right over here is your printer. And, uh, Everything that's over here is going to be printer related. Um, it comes out as a module. It's it's an older design, so it's open frame, which means that as you can see here, um, I can I can access all the components. Pretty easy uh, to change that guy out. The bezel is going to be one of your weak points on this entire machine, and that is because the plastics get brittle with age, and that sucks. But it that's just the way the nature goes, especially in harsh environments like medical environments where uh, you're always using different uh, sterile agents. Anyway, we have NIBP, which comes through this panel right here, and it comes up to some pressure transducers and to your NIBP pump, which is located on this riser card. So in order to get that card out, there's a couple screws right here. You have to uh, loosen up this cable and uh, disconnect some of your NIBPs, and you can pull that card right out. It is serviceable. The NIBP pump is pretty standard. You can find it on all sorts of other devices. Um, so you could desolder that pump, put another one on, and just keep on trucking. It is a generic pump. And I believe uh, there's two different variants of that pump. One of them is a 6 volt, one of them is a 12 volt. If you guys ever change out an NIBP pump, make sure that you get the correct voltage. They look identical, it's just the windings are going to be a little bit different, and that's why there's a different voltage. Okay, so in here is going to be a bunch of cool stuff. Um, so we do have two ultrasound cards, uh, and they should be identical. Let's see, which ones are they? So remember, we have ultrasound one, ultrasound two. 
and we have a TOCO, which is a, a pressure measurement board. And let's see, it's been a long time since I've, I've pulled these out. So uh, in the very bottom is going to be a, uh, basically, uh, is that the motherboard? Yeah, it is. It's an extension off the motherboard. I thought it was going to be a, uh, a riser card, you know, something that just interfaces. But it is a, the actual motherboard. It, it goes all the way to the back. The reason that all this stuff here is inside its own little Faraday cage, the reason why the power supply is over here in its own Faraday cage is because ultrasound is very susceptible to noise. So it, look at how secure this guy is. It's in a metal box. The power supply is completely in a metal box. And this whole entire device is inside a giant metal box. And that's to keep as much noise away from these components as possible. So I do see that there is a uh, DC power supply back here. Um, that's probably to power your transducer. And there are some adjustment uh, potentiometers here, but obviously we are not going to touch any of those. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see. It's been a long time since I've been inside this guy. Anyway, I was going to pull the cards out for you, but this here, as far as I know, is a functioning unit. And before I test it, I probably shouldn't be pulling anything else out. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and pull you guys down so you guys can see a little bit more closely what's going on. So here is the Faraday cage box uh, with your TOCO and your ultrasound boards. There's two of them. And let's see, this back here is a measurement card, an IO uh, printer, NIBP. You can see the pump sitting down in there. And there are some check valves. So if you do have some leaks, there are some stuff that you can service in there. Kind of cool. The power supply over here is really interesting because not only does it go in this plane, but there's also a bottom plane. So you can see down there, some of your rectifying diodes, they're on a different plane than this. So it's two PCBs. Very cool right there. Through panel for your uh, AC power because AC mains is gonna be switched. And uh, AC main switch comes back into here into your power supply. Old design, but uh, nonetheless, it's a goodie. Anyway guys, it is early, early in the morning. And uh, I think this video is long enough. I don't want to go into a lot of detail um, because I would like to go into some detail with the simulator hooked up so that you guys could actually see what the waveforms and everything look like and how to simulate uh, different pressures on like your toko. I think it'd be really cool. I don't know if I've ever done that. I've got 600 and some videos out there and it's getting to the point where I don't really remember all the things that I've done. So if I've already covered some of this, maybe I'm covering it a little bit better than I did last time. Who knows? Let me know, uh, and if you have any suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the description below. I'd like to hear some of you guys' input. Go ahead.